Girl, listen, we are back and you are listening to the Her Story Unplugged podcast. And I pray that you are still holding it down and that you're doing everything that you can to protect your peace and stay mentally grounded. And if this is your first time tuning in, I want to take a moment to say welcome. I am so excited to have you join us today. And I am your host, Lady C. I am the creator and founder of this beautiful platform where we are changing lives, y'all. We are helping women turn their pain into purpose and their potential into reality because we want to help women become the best version of themselves. And so I'm so grateful that God has allowed me to create this platform as a way to pour back into you. Because there's so many women walking around empty, just simply existing because they've poured out into everyone else and now there's no one left to pour back into them. And so now they continue to try to pour from an empty cup. But I'm just so grateful that God has allowed me to pour back into you. So I'm so grateful for that because God has need of you. He wants you to unplug from all of those circuits that has burnt you out over the years and get you plugged back into power because God wants to connect with you. And I don't know about you, I am so excited to see what 2021 has in store for us because I know that God is going to manifest some great things in our lives. And like, girl, listen, like just to reflect a little bit on the year of 2020, um, last year has taught me a whole new level of appreciation. And I think it's fair to say that everybody grew up in 2020. Like that was a year of maturity for real. Like you had experienced some things that you have never experienced before, experienced hurt and pain like you have never experienced before. And it brought about some good things as well because my son was born in February of 2020. And so that was the beauty of 2020 for me, but I suffered heartache with the rest of you all. I lost loved ones along the way, which caused pain and left an impact in my life. And But it allowed me to appreciate life. It allowed me to appreciate the people I love and don't take that for granted and just reach out more, love more, forgive more. You know, it really changes your perspective. So for the month of December, I just took some time to really seek the presence of God and not only just seeking the presence of God of what it is that he desired me to do for her story, but I was seeking the presence of God for my life personally, because there were some things that I needed from God and I really needed to be before the face of God to say, God, what is it that you want for my life? You know, I have endured the pain. I have endured heartache. I have endured so many different tragedies in my life. And what is it that you want me to do now? Like, where am I going? What direction you want me to go? And so God just spoke one word and that word was alignment. And that was just simply, God was just telling me that I have to make some adjustments. It simply means make adjustments. That's what alignment is. It's putting things in order, putting things in a straight line. And so God didn't say realignment because God is not trying to align what was already in place. God says alignment because he wants to align some things in our lives that have never been aligned before. And God desires for us to align our priorities. And so that was just making me change my perspective about life and changing my perspective of what is important to me, making sure I keep the main thing, the main thing, as my husband says, and just putting God first, you know, and my family and just what it is that I desire. And because sometimes you can get so caught up in everything else and all of the moving parts in your life to where you get lost in the moving parts and you begin to lose yourself. And so God allows us to take a moment in life to reflect on what it is that we really want. But it's up to you and I to decide what is it that we really want? It's up to us to decide if we're going to take that moment to actually reflect and say, what is it that I want out of life? And so in order for, you know, things to start lining up in our life, there has to be an alignment. And before an alignment takes place, um, there has to be something else, which leads me into my topic for today. I want to talk about breaking barriers. So you have to break some barriers in your life in order to align some things in your life. In order to make some adjustments, you have to move some things out of the way. 
And so what is a barrier? A barrier is an obstacle. It's anything that's restraining your progress. If anything is holding you back in your life, those are the things that God desired to move out of the way. Those barriers are things that's hindering your personal development, hindering your spiritual life, your spiritual walk with God. It can be um, it can be anything. And just, just to name a few, fear is something that stops a lot of people. Fear, anxiety, um, depression, and denial, defensiveness, not taking ownership of, of something where you're pointing the finger at everyone else for what's happening in your life and not taking that responsibility to say that I'm the cause of of what has transpired in my life, you know, because a lot of times we point the blame game at everybody else's. You're the reason why I'm not successful. You're the reason why I didn't, I couldn't take that job. You're the reason this, that, and the other, but no one should have that much power over your life to control your future. No one should have that much power over your life to control your destiny. No one should have that much power over your life to control any parts of your life unless you relinquish that control. And so just thinking about that of what are some things that is hindering your personal development? Is it fear? Is it the things that I named? Or maybe you're holding on to a relationship that has come to an end, but you refuse to let it go. You don't want to let that relationship go. Even though it's clear to you and the handwriting is on the wall and God has made that thing clear to you and showed you that, hey, you are growing in the relationship, but the person you with is no longer growing. The person you with has no desire to grow, but you refuse to let go. You want to hold on to that relationship because I guess you feel that you can change the person, but we have to understand you can't make a grown person change. You can't change anyone but yourself. That's the only person that you can change. That's the only person you're responsible for changing is yourself. And so my question to you is what barriers are attached to your life that's preventing you from becoming the best version of yourself. So I'm just allowing that to just soak in right now because you have to know for yourself and be honest with yourself to say, I'm allowing fear to stop me. Okay, if you're allowing fear to stop you, what steps can you take to where fear would no longer stop you? How can you press beyond fear? You know, how... And, and and far as the the person in your life that you're supposed to release, like why am I allowing this person to hinder my personal growth? Am I afraid of being alone? Am I just so comfortable with this person? Is is this my safe place? You know, do I feel that I can't thrive without this person? You know, you have to really be honest with yourself to say, why am I allowing this this person or this thing to be attached to my life and hindering me from becoming my best self? You have to really sort sort through that because I believe that many of us desire change and we want things to be different and we want more out of life. And so I encourage you, I encourage you today to just search within yourself to discover what is it that you really want out of life. And when you discover that, you write the vision, make it plain, and let's put it into action. Because to have it in your mind is one thing. To put it on paper is another thing. But to implement that thing in your life is a whole nother thing. And so you have to get to a place to where you don't allow anything hindered to hinder you. Take the restraints off. Like anything that's restraining you and, and holding you back, your limitations, your mindset, people, whatever it may be, you have to decide that, hey, I no longer want this to have control over my life. So if you want change, you have to align your actions with your words. You have to align your actions with your words. So if you're going to talk about it, you got to be about it. If you're going to say, I want to accomplish this, I want to get a degree, a degree is not going to fall in your lap unless you go to school. And you're not going to pass school and get the degree if you don't apply yourself. So you have to study. You have to give God something to work with. It's not going to just, it's not a hocus pocus type of God that we serve. No, we serve a God that paves the way for us. And he is paving the way for your for your personal growth. He's paving the way for your destiny, your purpose. It's already been paved, but it's like we have to walk the path and we have to put feet to the vision. We have to actually do something. And, and, it's may, and it's may, it may be hard work. 
And it's going to be, it's going to take work. But if you want change, you have to align your actions with your words in order to accomplish your goals. And so we have to know that our our goals in life is going to require some focus. It's going to require us to not get distracted along the way. And even if you get distracted along the way to where somebody knocks you off course in the sense of you're, you've been doing good and then all of a sudden you get distracted by something and you get plugged into something that you may or may not be plugged into, doesn't necessarily have to be sin. It can be something that just taking up too much of your time and is allowing you to not focus on the main thing. So it's going to require focus. It's going to require commitment and resilience. You're going to have to know how to get back up in the face of adversity. You're going to have to know how to get back up. When you get knocked down by the enemy, you get knocked down by life. You're going to know how to get back up and keep going. Don't allow your failures and mistakes to be your demise. No, get back up, girl. Keep going. Keep going because there's so much life in you. There's so much purpose in you that the enemy don't want you to discover. And so you have to know that God has something in store for you. And the enemy tries to throw all of the distractions at you to prevent you from fulfilling your purpose. But there is purpose on the inside of you. There truly is. And so you have to walk this thing out and look at and even change your perspective of how you view your failures and your mistakes. Look at it as growth opportunities. Like when you make a mistake and and you fail at something, a business venture, or you make a mistake in life, look at it to say, what did what did this mistake teach me? What did I learn from this? What did I learn from it? Because if you desire to be better, you have to stay true to yourself. You have to be honest with yourself and know where you are in life and know what areas you need to improve and never be afraid to invest in yourself in the sense of invest in your personal growth. Read the books that's in line with your passion. And if you don't know what your passion is, it's something that lights you up. It's something that makes you come alive. I don't care if it's cooking. It makes you come alive. I don't care if it's self-care. It makes you come alive. I don't care if it's just um, getting your nails done, getting your hair done. I don't care what it is. It makes you come alive. Whatever makes you thrive, makes you come alive, makes you get excited, whatever that passion is. And I probably didn't even name it, but to each his own, there's something that lights you up. Because for me, her story lights me up. Like that just brightens my day when I think about you all and just think about how can I help the next woman? What can I say to be a blessing to them? What content can I provide to help them become their best self? Like what can I do? How can I equip myself so that I can be a better assistant for them? How can I serve you? And so that's what I have. What that's the type of mindset that I have when I approach her story. Like, how can I serve the women that are connected to her story? How can I help them? You know, and so if you desire better, stay true to yourself, invest in yourself, invest in your personal growth, and most importantly, shift your mindset. There has to be a shift in your mindset because you have to think bigger. There has to be a shift in your mindset and you have to align your priorities and say, what's important? What can I limit, eliminate out of my life so that I can reach my goal? What can I get rid of? What can I let go? What am I holding on to that's holding me back that is not necessary in my life? What can I release in order to get where I need to be? So you have to align your priorities, find out what's important because in order to align, for alignment to take place in your life, some some barriers have to be broken in order for you to move forward. It's like you have to break those barriers in your life in order for you to move forward. Because I truly believe that there are a group of people that desire to move forward in the things of God. I truly believe that, that you are listening to me right now and you're saying that you want to move forward in the things of God. But there are some of you 
who are listening to this broadcast, who refuse to release that thing that's holding you back. It's like you want to hold on to your, your past while embracing your future, but that's not, that's impossible because you wonder why you take two steps forward and that thing knocks you 10 steps back, you know, and, and that's like the cycle of your life. It's like, I can't get ahead. You can't get ahead because you weighed it down with your past. You can't get ahead because you're weighted, weighted down with what's unimportant. You can't go forward forward because there's some barriers in your life that has to be broken before you can be released. So you have to release those barriers. But sometimes we can when we are we when we are challenged to choose, it's like we get a stronger grip on that thing. Like we really start holding on to those things that is that we know is not good for us. We know those things are toxic and we still holding on to those things. And so we have to get to a place to where we release those things in order to move forward. Because I don't know about you, I'm tired of taking steps back into the past. No, I wanna move forward and like no looking back. Because God wants you to eliminate those things in your life. Because he wants to align you up to fulfill your purpose. God is so for you. He is like for you. God is for you. He is rooting for you. God is not trying to uh, realign what was because the old way didn't work. He's not trying to put new wine in old bottles. No, he's not. God desires to manifest something new in your life. He's trying to manifest something new in your life. I want to I want to say that again because I want you to really understand the love that God has for you. He wants to manifest something new in your life, but you have to make the necessary adjustments in order to receive the manifestation of God's glory. If you want to receive the manifestations of the blessings of God, you have to make some adjustments in your life. Because God has graced you for this moment of crossing over into something new, but you have to decide how much unnecessary baggage are you trying to carry over with you? Because God is not trying to take that baggage with you because you have to let that baggage go. Because whenever you want to cross over into something new, you have to release what's holding you because God desires to increase your capacity for more, but change has to take place. And he wants you to change your mindset so that you can change your environment. Because listen, God desires to grace you to walk through these new doors. Like we talk about how we want God to open up new doors for us and new doors of opportunity and things of that nature. But there has to be something about your behavior that, that changes. Your character has to change. God wants you to change your behavior, change your character. Something about you is something that is not working on this journey. So you have to change. There's some things that has to change. If you want to walk in those new rooms and those new opportunities, those new doors, something about your character has to change because we can't attract anything new if our mannerisms remain the same. We have to change. We have to embrace change. And so I just said something right there. We want to attract change, but it's like we can't attract something new. We can't attract change if our mannerisms remain the same. So needless to say, girl, I'm changing my mannerisms. I'm changing my manners because I want to attract the blessings, like every blessing that God has in store for me. Like everything that belongs to me, I want to attract that in my life. I want to be magnetic to the blessings in my life. Like I want blessings to be coming to me from the north, the east, the west, the south. I want them to like overtake me. Like I want the blessings of God to just overtake me. And so if you agree with me, I want you to say, girl, I am changing my manners. I am changing my mannerisms. Like I am such a new person right now. And we're going to speak that thing by faith. Because whatever God needs you to be in this season, we are asking God to help us to become that person so that we can reach the place that God desires us to reach. Not doing it for the blessings, but we're doing it because we want to become better. And so I encourage you to break free from anything that is holding you and, and live that purpose-filled life. Live your life filled with purpose helping people, encouraging people, smiling at people. Like that is, it's so much purpose in that. Because I know people, people say that, well, I don't, I don't know what my purpose is and I haven't discovered my purpose and smiling at someone, encouraging someone, embracing them with a hug. But right now COVID is out there. So be careful with hugging on people. Make sure you wear your mask. Okay. All right. So 
<laughs> just a little plug right there. I still love you. It's just a little plug. But be intentional about your personal growth and development. Seriously, be intentional about that. Be intentional about your self-care. Take the time to focus on what you really want out of life because it is so important. It's important what you want because sometimes people say, well, what I want doesn't matter. It does matter. You matter. So I want you to know that. And so I'm taking these pauses because I want that to soak in your spirit. You matter. How you feel, it matters because we need you to function. And so, and that's why self-care is so vital. It's so vital for your physical, your spiritual, and your mental growth. It truly is. And so you have to give yourself permission to grow. Give yourself permission to grow and become all that God desires you to become. Because you deserve it. And you are so loved. You are so necessary. And so don't, I know you may feel so unappreciated and but you are appreciated. You are. And you have been holding it down, girl. And you are doing well. And just in case you needed somebody to pat you on the back, girl, I'm patting you on the back. I'm rooting for you. I am. But with all that being said, girl, I'm about to go and work on my mannerisms because I need to get my manners together because I want to attract everything that God has for me. I really do. So that's what I'm going to be working on in this season is trying to get my manners together, working on my mannerisms. So it has been fun. I have enjoyed our time together. And I personally want to invite you to our private Facebook group at Her Story Unplugged. And make sure you visit us at herstoryis.org so that you can connect with us on all social media platforms. And most importantly, I want you to stay in the know because guess what? We are in this thing together and we will win together.